What's going on today, guys? Golden Shower here, and today we'll be talking about conspiracy theories surrounding the song Golden Hour by Jake. It's a song with over 500 million streams on Spotify, as well as Jake having 28 million comfortable monthly listeners. I would say it's a bit more than a conspiracy theory as well, though, because there's quite a bit of hard evidence. Overall, I think the situation is pretty funny. Something definitely smells here, and it doesn't smell like gold. It smells like piss. I happened to come across this when someone in my Discord shared a video by Clavier Lernin. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He made several videos covering the situation over the past few weeks and I will be referencing his video a bit throughout this video. The situation may start off pretty petty but you will see as it goes on it grows into something much bigger that is still very petty. So first I'll play a bit of the song. I hope it doesn't get claimed. If it does I will end up muting it. I'll be praying to Salmon Wojacki or whatever their name is. Whoever's in charge of YouTube at this point I don't even know anymore. Please don't claim this video. I'm running out of poly and mini trackers to feed my family. And that's about all I can play without getting copyrighted. So clearly this is an amazing composition. I may be a massive hater, but I can't dispute that this is a great song. But the news I'm about to drop on you today is like finding out that Santa Claus isn't real. If you're a child, by the way, you shouldn't be watching my channel. But um, if you are, leave the room, please. Also, Santa Claus isn't real. Clavier was doing a bit of research on this song, Golden Hour by Jake, in order to do a tutorial on how to play the song. He does piano tutorials normally, and he stumbled upon some very strange things within this song and the TikToks and videos surrounding it. Hey, what the hell? This guy's using a green screen. This guy's a fraud. <clears throat> <laughs> so the first thing that's really strange comes from his TikToks where he's performing on what seems like an acoustic piano. The first thing that's off about this TikTok are that the notes that Jake is playing do not match up with what you are hearing. He only appears to be playing white notes and they appear to be four semitones off from what you actually hear. Now, while it's true that you could normally transpose a keyboard or an electronic piano, at least to the naked eye, this does not look like an electronic piano. And to shift an acoustic piano down four semitones, that is no easy task if it's even possible. I, I'm personally not an expert on piano tuning, so I can't say for certain. This must be the most out of key piano on the planet when your student has a piano that's exactly four semitones out of tune. Yeah, what a surprise, a TikTok that's fake. But what if I told you the two TikToks I'm gonna mention have about 140 million views? And I'd assume a majority of the people watching think that these are real and have even become fans because of these TikToks. There's also some very weird things about the way this video is cut together. There's a moment where it zooms in and magically her head skips a few frames from where it was before Okay, so I'm gonna skip frame by frame here just to make this really obvious, okay? So as you can see, she's looking down and she's suddenly looking up. She immediately moves. Now, if you look, look what happens when you normally skip frame by frame. No one moves that fast. It's not where it should be, essentially. So either she's able to move her head at 60 miles an hour, or this is several takes spliced together. Guys, this is gonna get really autistic, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean, I'm gonna be focusing extremely on minute details. Another thing I noticed is that during the zoom, the bottom part of her necklace is suddenly visible where when it's not visible at any part during the rest of the TikTok. Now, it's totally possible that she turned her body with her neck, I guess, but a lot of things shift in just a single frame. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. All right, let's play this next TikTok here. <laughs> Knowing these TikToks are fake makes this even funnier. Okay, now look at me like you want to fuck me. Yeah, this piano sounds exactly the same, even though it's an electric piano and the other one was an acoustic piano. What gives? So in Clavier's video, he brought it to a DAW and he compared the waveforms and they look nearly identical. And this gave me an idea. Do these waveforms cancel out if you invert the phase? For anyone who doesn't know, sounds have waveforms and every sound has a slightly unique waveform. If you take two sounds that are the exact same and flip the phase of one of them, it'll cancel out. And the more similar it is, the more it'll cancel out the sound. Now, I'm not saying that two different snaps will be able to cancel out, but if the audio is literally the exact same, like if I took this snap right here and then duplicated it, if I flip the phase of one of them, then it should cancel out. Anyways, here's the piano from each of the TikToks. I don't know about you, but it sounds virtually the same to me. And to my surprise, or I should say not surprise, it canceled out over 99% of the audio. Which, if you know anything about the way audio works, 
It shouldn't do that if they are different recordings. You would have to literally be a robot to play it so similar and record it so similar that something like this would happen. It's essentially, it has to be the same audio. The one thing it didn't cancel out though was the vocals. It also wouldn't cancel out if they were different piano recordings, but still playing the same notes. Another thing worth noting, if these were two separate recordings, uh, the velocity and the timing would be a little bit more different, especially the velocity. So if I had to guess what is going on here, the piano is the same in both TikToks, and the vocals may be slightly different or the vocals are also replaced and they were mixed slightly different or recorded slightly different or both. Either way, I've objectively proved that the piano is not real in these videos. One more random thing I noticed in this video before we move on. I can't let it go, guys. I literally, I can't let it go. There's something wrong with me. The lady in this second video here, her hair changes several times and changes back. If you look closely, you can see her hair is behind her ear one moment, and then suddenly it appears in front of her ear, and then later on in the video, it goes back behind her ear. And during this entire period, she has her glasses in her right hand, which is how you would normally do that. So she is not able to make that happen. Plus it happens within the span of a frame. So it, it all doesn't make any sense. It's spliced. The videos are spliced together is what I'm saying. One thing I can't get over is how little attention to detail they paid while editing these TikToks because I would almost certainly be noticing this if I was splicing together takes. Anyways, the music video is faked too. Just to clarify, I don't think that he can't play this. I just think that they try to give the appearance of him playing it and he's not playing it. Now in Clavier's video, he brings up a few lot. You may be wondering why I'm referencing his video so much. It You'll see a bit later on, it circles back to him with Jake eventually responding. So Clavier brings up a few live performances in his analysis. On the Jimmy Fallon show, there are other instrumentalists playing along with him. And again, he's playing all white notes. I mean, maybe it's transposed, but it's not, that's not the right key. And Clavier thought, brought up something really interesting, which I think is pretty funny too. Uh, it, it's entirely possible that these pianos were completely stripped out and they're just they don't they make no noise i i hope is the case because that's just so funny that is so funny clavier also analyzes another video in which he's using an electric piano but it appears that the electric piano is turned off either that or the the sun is gleaming perfectly on all the lights within it and you can't see a single thing uh but it's probably just it's probably off now if you're wondering why someone would fake playing the piano like this to this degree. I, I feel like there's a few reasons. The first is this is an incredibly complex piece to play, especially while doing vocals at the same time. And the audience seeing this would definitely think it's a much more impressive thing than if someone was just playing vocals while someone else is doing the piano or uh, th there's a track playing in the background and you're just doing the vocals. It would definitely make you stand out amongst the crowd because not too many people could actually do that and write the song. Now, am I saying I could play this? Hell no. Hell no, I cannot play that. But I do think it's funny. So you guys may think it's all over at this point. We had our laughs. We found what's wrong with the videos. It's all over, right? Wrong. This is just the beginning of the story. This rabbit hole turns into a sinkhole, as you'll see. So basically, there's an interview with Jake where he states he has no label backing, no marketing, no huge team. Because I don't have a label promoting me. It's just me and my brother. Because I want to prove that you don't need a label to make it in the music industry. People always think I'm signed and I have this huge team and marketing budget. And then I tell them I'm independent. And that's wrong. That's all, that's all wrong. He's with a label named Artists Without a Label. I'm not joking. Furthermore, this label, I'm sorry, this not label is owned by Sony. <laughs> Again, not joking. <laughs> it sounds like a joke. It sounds like a bit that would be in Futurama or something like that. No, this is real life right here. In other words, this is basically the most industry plant shit of all time. Am I saying Jake is an industry plant? Maybe, actually. I'm not saying he doesn't have skills or anything. It does seem like he's trying to give the illusion that he doesn't have any sort of label backing and he clearly has label backing. AWOL is a music distribution company that also does marketing, physical distribution, data analysis, radio, and synchronization licensing. They have signed artists such as De La Soul, Die Antwoord, JPEG Mafia, Lil Peep, Puya, Kodeka, Steve Lacey, Tom York, just to name a few. You may have noticed I just said signed. Now this is no small label operation. This is a petri dish that grows independent artists until they're ready to move on to a major label. Or since Sony owns it now, they're just absorbed into Sony. Now, is there anything wrong with using this distribution service? No, 
But you probably shouldn't claim you don't have label backing or a marketing budget or a huge team when you're working with these people. In fact, the three stages that they have, the top stage is literally called AWOL Recordings, and it even says it's a record label on their website. You may say, well, maybe it just plays a small part in their label. Well, he's on the front page all over their website. In the videos, the front page, he's like one of the top names. So if anyone's going to be in that top tier, I'd be surprised if it wasn't him. Now, as Clavier states in his video, he has TV promotion, radio promotion, Spotify playlisting, Apple playlisting, collabs with big artists such as Charlie Puth, Alicia Keys. Now, it's possible all of this happened organically. Is it likely? No. One thing that's kind of hilarious that Clavier also pointed out in his video is that if you check his Facebook page, you can see how many people manage a Facebook page essentially. And if you check his Facebook page, at that time it had 79 people managing it, which is a lot of people to be managing a Facebook page. A huge team, some might even say. I would call it two small platoons, maybe even two medium sized platoons. I decided to go check this out for myself, and there is now 80 people. So they're just add, they're adding people on here. Not a huge team though, by the way. Now this is where things get extra, really extra juicy. So basically Jake saw Clavier's video and decided to respond to it in comment form. I'm gonna be honest, he seemed pretty level-headed here, but for all we know, that wasn't him that responded. I mean, it could be one of those 80 people running his Facebook or Instagram pages. So I'm gonna go through a few of the points here and give my opinions on them. So Jake claimed that he uses a transpose button in order to make it easier to play, which we all assumed if the videos were real. But that doesn't explain quite a few other things, such as the editing in the videos, or the fact that when I take the audio from both of the videos, they literally phase out. Now he claims that the pianos look acoustic, but they are electronic and they can transpose. You're telling me this is an electronic piano? Send me the link right now. Send me the link for all these electronic pianos right now. He also claims that sometimes he uses a loop track or layers in the audio in order to make it sound better more enjoyable for the audience. He also says a lot of people do this. Now I do agree a lot of people do this and it is somewhat normal sometimes, especially in live performances. The difference here is people aren't usually miming to it, whether it's in a TikTok, a live performance, or a music video. And that's the exact thing that people are calling out here. Now if the audio was layered in in these TikToks here, why does it completely phase out? when I use it, or I should say 99.9%. .9%. Like if, I guess if you layered it, you layered in 0.1% of it aside from the vocals. So I guess technically that's layering, but not really, not to anyone with ears. Now, if I had to analyze this response here, I would say he is trying to vaguely cover all his bases. I do think all of these things is true in at least one instance here, or at least a certain part of one of these instances here. It does give him plausible deniability in the fact that he isn't specifically saying in one instance here what exactly happened. He also mentions how he doesn't have a label, but I think he's kind of hiding behind the fact that he's with a label called Artists Without a Label. I can't even believe I'm saying that. What does this channel become at this point? I don't know why he harps so much on the no label stuff. I mean, he should know how unpopular industry plants are. Why would you want to be an industry plant? One thought that crossed my mind here is that kids would 100% eat up this response. They would buy the shit out of this without a second thought. But I also think when listening to this song, this isn't really a, a kid's song. Like sure, kids would enjoy it, but I feel like this is a type of song that people of all ages could enjoy. So I don't know exactly why he went this route. Maybe it's the only route he could take it this point maybe he's just really gung-ho on the i did this all by myself man maybe he's just stuck on that mindset i don't fucking know i don't really i don't really completely get it now i do still think this is a really good song regardless of how it was made or how it's being performed i should clarify that again here but i don't really understand what all the fraud and cover-ups are for other than to make him seem more amazing and i feel like people would already see this song as amazing regardless of how it's being performed or how it's made but maybe he, like i said earlier he's just trying to stand out from the crowd. Anyways, that's it for my video talking about the Jake Golden Hour situation. What are your guys' thoughts on it? I know this isn't the most serious drama in the world. In fact, I think it's a pretty funny and petty one. I did have quite a few laughs and quite a few aha moments while I was digging through this. Shout out to Clavier Lernin for helping blast this out to the world. It seemed like people did kind of catch on to it beforehand, but just randomly in TikTok comments here and there. But his is the first video I saw really talking about this in depth. For everyone who likes this video, I'll give you one golden shower. I mean, golden hour. Just meet me in the bathroom after you're done liking the video. If you made it to the end of the video, comment, thanks for the golden shower, Weaver. If you can't tell, I'm just making these more ridiculous to see who actually comments them. Please, I need to feed my family. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos. Subscribe if you haven't. Check out my second channel if you haven't. If you want to support the channel, consider joining my Patreon and becoming a channel member. I'll see you guys next time.